Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, what I'm going to do is show you guys how you can create an on-click listener that can be applied to multiple buttons within your activity. That way you no longer have to set up individual ones for each of your buttons. This is a really easy process, so let's get started. All right, so before this video, I did create a few things within our activity. The first thing that I did was create a text view. And what I want to do with this text view is change the text. So whenever we press a button, the text view will change to like button two when we press button two. The next thing I did was add in five buttons. Each one has a unique ID. So button one has an ID of button one, and then button two has an ID of button two, and that pattern continues for all the buttons. The last thing that I did was define a few strings for our buttons within our strings.xml file. Now, if you're not sure where that's at, come over to the leftmost panel, come down to your resources folder, values, and double click the strings.xml file. That'll bring this file up and you can see that I defined names for all of our buttons and I defined a name for our text view. So that should be everything that I did before I started recording this video, just in the interest of saving some time. So now if we come over to the mainactivity.java file, here we can start writing our code to apply this onclick listener to all of our buttons. So the first thing that we're gonna do is grab all of our buttons from our activity main.xml and essentially link them up to a variable within our Java code. So the way we do that is by typing in button, and then I'm just gonna call this button button one, set that equal to find view by ID. And now if you remember, button one had an ID of button one. So if we type in r.id dot button one, scroll all the way down, hit enter. Now we have this button right here linked up to this variable in our Java code. Now, if you remember from the previous video, what we would do then is type in button one dot set on click listener. And then we would type in new view dot on click listener. And then Android studio would fill in all this code. So now this gets really messy when you start adding in a ton of buttons to your activity. You can imagine, you know, we have five buttons and we take up already six lines of code I and mean, that's going to add up really fast. So what we could do now is instead of passing in this new view.onClickListener, this guy right here, we can pass in the instance of our activity. So typing in this. So now I'm sure you noticed that we have an error within our code and that's because our activity doesn't implement the onClickListener interface. In order to implement this interface, what we're gonna have to do is come all the way up to the top of our Java file and where our class is defined, at the very end, we're gonna type in implements and then we're gonna type in view on click listener. So this very first option at the top here and then hit enter. So now we have to implement the on click method. And the way we can do that is just by hovering over this error message here, coming down and clicking implement methods, click that. And then in this dialog box, all you have to do is click okay. And Android studio will fill in the following code. So now if you take a look at this method, this one is exactly the same as the one when we pass in new view dot on click listener, take a look. So we have this guy, the on click method here, and this onclick method here. The only difference between this one and this one is that this onclick method will be able to apply to multiple buttons and this one will only apply to button one. So now if we just change back to what we had before by passing in this instance of our activity, then what we're gonna do is set up the rest of our buttons because right now we only have button one defined. So I'm just gonna copy this line of code here, paste it four more times, and then I'm just gonna change the names to button one to two, three, four, and five and then of course changing them here as well. So now we have all of our buttons from our XML file linked up to a variable within our Java code. Then we're gonna need to copy this line of code and then apply it to the rest of our buttons. So I'm gonna paste this again four more times, change the variable names. So now that we implemented an onclick listener for each of our buttons, whenever there's a click event for one of the buttons, that click event will be sent to our onclick method. So what we have to do now is find a way to differentiate between which button was pressed. And the way we can do that is by using our view variable right here. So if we tab over a little bit, we can use a switch statement. So we type in switch and then within here we can do v.getID. Then within our switch statement, we're gonna type in case r.id.button1. And then we're gonna type in break. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this for the rest of our buttons and then change these variable names to. Now, the reason why we're setting up our switch statement like this is because when the user presses a button, now we're not sure which button that was, that view will get passed in as V. And then we're gonna grab the ID of it and then figure out whether or not it was button one, two, three, four, or five that was pressed. So let's say the user pressed button one, the code within this case statement will be executed. 
So now what I want to do is make it so we can change the text of our text view right here. So if we come outside of our onCreate method, we're going to type in private text view, and I'm just going to name it text view. And then if we come into our onCreate method, we're going to assign the text view to the text view that we created in our XML file. So text view equals find view by ID, R dot ID, and then I gave that an ID of text view just to keep things simple. So now we have that linked up to this variable here. And then if we come down to our onClick method, we can change the text of that now. So we can type in text view dot set text. And then I want to reference the string resources rather than hard coding in a string value. So we could type in R dot string dot whatever the string value is for button one. And then this can be applied to all of our case statements here. So that should be everything that we need to change the text of our text view. So now if we save this, we can run it by clicking the little play button in the top right hand corner, wait for the app to load up, and then we can click our buttons to see if it actually worked. So we click button one, you can see that the text changes to button one. We click two, three, four, and five. You can go in any order that you want. But the cool thing about this is that we only used one onclick method rather than setting up five individual ones, which saved us a lot of code. So I hope that made sense. As always, if you guys have any questions about what happened in this video, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I post another video in this series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.